if you're in Broncos County, for the last couple of years, it has not been kind, especially ever since Peyton Manning retired, got you to a Super Bowl in Super Bowl 50, and pretty much went out with a bang uh, for his career. But unfortunately, since then, things have not been kind. You've been through multiple quarterbacks. Uh, your defense has regressed. And, well, we don't need to say more about the offense. Uh, you also gone through a couple of new head coaches. But 2022 could present some change, especially after how 2021 went, which pretty much proved to be the last straw. So Denver in that season were one of the teams that had a 3-0 start, but a fluky one because, well, the teams that they beat, the, the Giants, the Jaguars, the Jets, all pretty bad teams in 2021. And then after that, they went 4-10 the rest of the way because, well, their offense sucked yet again. Vic Fangio kept fucking around with the offensive game plan, and he didn't know what to do at quarterback. Teddy Bridgewater was, uh, he, was he was outright terrible, but he was, I'd say he's below average. He was very below average, um, and he didn't know, like, what to do with the ball, but Drew Locke was just, okay, he was terrible. Um, so neither of them could advance the ball, stretch the field. Um, they barely could score points, um, in, in the passing perspective. So the only positive thing when it comes to the Denver Broncos offense in 2021 was their running back core of, of Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon, that two headed running back, running back attack. And this was all despite having a top five defense. So for the Denver Broncos, a seven and 10, seven, 10 record was was it looked okay on on paper, but when you looked at the grand scheme of things, it was bad. It was another bad year for Denver. Vic Fangio was finally let go, and in came in former Packers Packers offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett, who has worked with a two time MVP, uh, two straight MVP in Aaron Rodgers. So for the Denver Broncos, you got this head coach. Now you need a quarterback. And you want to have that goal of finally getting over the hump and getting back to the playoffs for the first time since Payne Man retired and maybe even go for more. And, well, looking at their biggest key offseason move, they are one step towards making that goal happen. And that, of course, is the, the trade to get Russell Wilson out of Seattle to go to the mile high. So, yes, they went out. Gave up a shit ton to go get Russell Wilson. So, at the time, yes, it was like a pretty unexpected trade. Pretty unexpected. Because of all the teams that um, Russell Wilson was predicted to go to, the Saints, uh, uh, the Dolphins, or who knows, like what, I forgot what other teams were there, but the Denver Broncos, I don't think he was on that list. So, Russell Wilson, now Denver Bronco. Uh, the, the the Denver Broncos gave up Drew Locke, tight end Noah Fant, defensive end Shelby Harris, a couple of first and second round picks, and a fifth round pick. So a pretty massive haul just to get Russell Wilson, to get the quarterback um, that could take them to the promised land. And it's it's looking very it's looking very good if you're in the mile high, especially with the additions that they put around. Uh, their new quarterback that plagued that plagued him in Seattle, like an offensive line, p- investing in that group and investing in the pass rush, such as getting some additions from the 49ers, like offensive tackle Tom Compton, and in the defensive side, defensive tackle DJ Jones, and in the secondary, K1 Williams at corner. And then even more in the pass rush, when you get Randy Gregory from the Dallas Cowboys, that pass rush has been intensified. And looking at some of the re-signings, you had Melvin Gordon, which is which was kind of an odd re-signing, but you still got that two-headed attack at, with Gordon and Javante Williams. Um, safety Kareem Jackson is staying on, so a Denver defense is getting really dangerous there. And the losses, they they were not that bad. You lose Bryce Callahan to the LA Chargers. You lose your other corner in Cal- Fuller to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Micah Kaiser goes to the Las Vegas Raiders. So, all in all, um, your additions um, outweigh your losses. So, if you're the Denver Broncos, it wasn't too bad. 
So looking at some of their draft picks, um, they didn't have much because, well, the Russell Wilson trade. Um, they drafted a tight end from UCLA by the name of Gray Dul- Dulcich, um, as well as getting a linebacker by the name of Nick Bonito. So adding more pieces to um, both sides of the ball. And for the Denver Broncos this season, th- this is a this is almost a complete team, Al- almost because. We don't know how far Russell Wilson can take them. Like, sure, he elevates them to playoff, maybe deep playoff contention. Um, because, well, he's he's taken the Seahawks, the Seahawks to um, the playoffs multiple times. Well, aside from the fact that the Seahawks haven't made made it back to the NFC Championship game since, you know, which Super Bowl. Um, but Russell Wilson, nonetheless, has made it to back-to-back Super Bowls. He's won a Super Bowl. So you you know what you're getting from Russell Wilson. He elevates this team. But can he elevate the rest of the offense? That's that's the other important thing to keep in mind here. Like a lot of a lot of these players on offense still have something to prove. Like Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Javante Williams, Tim Patrick. Uh, Greg Dul- Dulcich, the defense is still a top five defense, so they're fine. But when it gets to um, the case of whether or not they're in playoff contention, like if they get to that point, they have to get that experience um, in in those biggest of games. So, yes, Russell Wilson makes them a playoff contender, but how far can he take them? How far can he take them when those games really matter? That remains to be seen. So looking at some of their key games in 2022, it's the very first game in Seattle. (laughs) Right away, Russell Wilson gets to go back to the place he started his career. And I am very excited to see this game unfold. Um, It's a Monday nighter. um, So you get to not only see the debut of Russell Wilson in a Broncos uniform, you also get to see the debut of the Monday night crew of, well, the NFL and Fox guys, the top crew. But it's going to be interesting that, you, like, how the the Seahawks crowd reacts to Russell Wilson when he comes out. Are they going to give him the Tom Brady treatment where Tom Brady was cheered um, during introductions and, the, and then during the game he was booed every time he tried to throw the ball and then after the game he was, like, celebrated again. Or is it going to be like the that LeBron James Miami Heat situation or Kevin Durant when he went back to Oklahoma City kind of situation where they just relentlessly booed him? So it's going to be an interesting game, a very interesting game. I mean, we know how Seattle is going to be in 2022, um, but this game for Denver is going to be like kind of like that first test for them. Yes, it's Seattle, but you know, for the Denver Broncos are going to be like a team that Sure, we have a new quarterback, but you know we have to like figure things out first. Then you have a week three game against the 49ers at home on a Sunday night. You're playing against a very good defense and a quarterback that has a lot of upside potential in Trey Lance. Sure, it's your old division rival uh, for Russell Wilson, but you want to make sure you get this uh, victory out if you're Denver. Um, then things start picking up in terms of the AFC West perspective. Because now you got to go to Las Vegas the week after to play the the Raiders, and who have a new toy on offense and a improved defense as well. Then you go to the LA Chargers uh, two weeks after to play a, a pretty similar, but also maybe even more balanced team than Denver. So who knows? Who knows how they match up? And then late in the season, that's where things get interesting because. Whether or not you'll be in contention for that AFC West crown or just trying to compete for a playoff spot because there's only so much room for many of them. You, have, you play Kansas City in Week 14. You host them. And then on Christmas Eat, Christmas Day and then in Christ, uh, New Year's Day, you play the LA Rams in, in SoFi on Christmas Day. And then you go to Kansas City to play the Chiefs on New Year's Day. Man. That they that that's where things can get very very interesting. So for the Denver Broncos, it's going to be a fun season for them. Um, I know people are very excited 
um, to see how this team does with the quarterback that they've finally been been wanting. Um, a quarterback that can finally elevate this team to new heights. But, you know, how does how does Russell Wilson like how like how does he eventually pan out? Like how does he like he how will he settle in? Um, how how does he, how does he spread that ball out like in a in a good way in a balanced attack when you have Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, Greg Dulich, and may, maybe even Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams? Like how do you evenly distribute that? There's a lot of questions to answer for this offense. We know so much about the defense already. We know their potential. So Denver, you can you you easily you can easily see. 10 to 13 wins, but it all depends on how this offense does, how Russell Wilson, how far he takes them this coming season.